Hello and welcome back to the Shepherd's Rest Doc Talk. This is episode 21B. I'm Cam and this is Julie. Yes, this is the New Testament or the Brit Hadashah discussion of this week's Torah portion. Now, this week's is found in John 1, 19 through 2, 12. So we're going to be in the mystical book of John. John. He is so different than <clears throat> the others. Yeah. It's amazing. So we'll just start in 19. It says, Now this was the witness of John when the Jews sent from Jerusalem priests and Levites to ask him, Who are you? Okay, we'll talk about this for a second. He says he, the Jews sent priests and Levites, and I just find it very interesting that he separates himself. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this before. <clears throat> he kind of distanced himself from the people who live in Judea, yeah. the Judean area, seem to be called the Jews. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's because of governmental separation, but we also will see later on in the Torah portion when... Yeshua begins to pick his disciples, mm -hmm. he calls them Israelites. <clears throat> yes. So there is a definite distinction between what Yeshua refers to these men as and what these men refer to the people in the in, Judean yeah. area as. So I would propose that a lot of the disciples are from the northern kingdom that have been scattered. And that's why John refers to them as the Jews. I can't prove that. But it, it fits sure the fits the pattern. Mm -hmm. Sure fits the pattern. Okay, so they said... And he did come for the house of Israel. Yes. Yes, he did. That's it's, who they would be. Yes. <clears throat> and he stays up in the Galilee area mm -hmm. when he's uh, doing his ministry. Yeah. So, But they ask him, who are you? Because word has now spread that John is baptizing for repentance. Right. And they, these, it's the Pharisees that sent him because he's baptizing for repentance and saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, in Christianity, the Pharisees get a very bad rap, and it's not, it's not justified. Really yeah. because again, again, we're believing the story of the accusers. The Pharisees were not inherently bad. In fact, right. if you look at their doctrine and look at what we believe today, we have all the similarities, mm -hmm. you know, that's where a lot of our good teach. you know, Paul was a Pharisee of, of Pharisees. Pharisees. Mm -hmm. And once he got the revelation of who Yeshua was, he was still a Pharisee. Right. I mean, it didn't change anything. He just now had the revelation of who right. Yeshua was, right. which Lazarus which, was a Pharisee. There's a lot of Pharisees that follow Yeshua. Okay. So he answers them by quoting scripture. He says, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of Yahweh, as the prophet Isaiah said. So basically he said, look, it's, you know, they ask him, are you the Messiah? No, I'm not the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Are you Elijah? I'm not the, I'm not Elijah. And they say, are you the prophet? And I love that about the prophet, because for one, Moses says, That's right. there will come a prophet as unto, like, like me. me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the prophet is the one they were looking for. But they also attributed the prophet role to Messiah ben Joseph, who would be the suffering Messiah. Mm -hmm. They believe that there could be two, because when you read the Messianic interpretations in the, uh, or the Messianic scriptures, they tend to point to a suffering Messiah and a glorified, kingly, dominant, you know, right. wipe everybody out. No. <laughs> or, you know, set everything straight um, in that kingly role, Messiah. So, and, and the Messianic scriptures, meaning scriptures in the Tanakh that point to the coming king, Messiah. Right. Absolutely. So we see in 29 of um, chapter 1 that he says, On the next day, John saw Yeshua coming towards him. Now, this is after Yeshua's 40-day fast. So he sees Yeshua coming towards him, and he says, See the Lamb of Elohim who takes away the sin of the world. Now, I find this very interesting because as you read on, John once again says the next day, so now we're two days later, mm -hmm. he says again the following day, John was standing with two of his taught ones. Now he has two witnesses. 
And he says, looking at Yeshua walking, he said, see the Lamb of Elohim. I love that because it points to the first coming and the second coming. The first coming, he was the Lamb who took away the sins of the world. The, uh, the second coming is, behold, the Lamb of Elohim. Yeah. So the second time he comes, he's not taking away the sins of the world. Right. He did that already, you know, and through belief in him, that's done. And right. then you have the second where he is just referred to as the Lamb of Elohim. And I want to talk about the Lamb of God. What is that? All right, well, this goes all the way back to Genesis 22:7, when Abraham is taking Isaac to be sacrificed. And Isaac says, Dad, I'm paraphrasing, Dad, I have the wood, but where is the lamb? And Abraham, in a cryptic way, says, God will provide himself the lamb. Yeah. So... If you'll notice, he didn't provide a lamb for them later on. Oh, he provided a ram. ram. Yep. So <clears throat> when John says, behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, he is referring to that lamb, that ascending offering, that offering that's offered every morning and sandwiched with the offering at the end, right. which is also a lamb. And, and, and they all the other sacrifices fit in between those two. So when he says the lamb he's not necessarily referring to the passover lamb because no, that's a peace not, offering that's right this mm -hmm. isn't a sin offering i mean the lamb he's referring to is a sin offering right but the passover lamb is a peace offering right yeah. okay so the two witnesses that john has with him when he says the second time behold the lamb begin to follow yeshua mm -hmm. so john was basically pointing there he is that's the one i've been i've been telling you guys about so those two witnesses begin to follow him. I see it like a baton pass. Yeah. yeah I'm serious. Now so I give it to you. Now to you. Right, because after this, preparing. we really don't see much of John. He becomes imprisoned and... Well, yeah. it's the idea of less of me and more of you. Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah. Yes, very, very good. These two disciples of John that are now passed on to Yeshua begin following him, and Yeshua says something very interesting. He turns around and he says, what do you seek? And I just think that's Ooh. so important as to, he really does ask every single one of us that. What do you seek? What is it that you want? Do you want truth? I'll reveal myself as truth. Are you wanting this? I reveal myself Psalms as 18. This. Yes. And when you said that, I was 18. like, it's Psalms 18. Yes, that's what I saw too. He says, he says, what do you seek? And he's asking all of us that. What is it that you seek? And I'm like, truth, just yes, truth. truth. And let me tell you, it's that's a hard one sometimes, you know. Yeah. yeah. And they want to know where he's staying, and he says, Come and see. Now I want to talk about that come and see. I don't want to see. tell is he southern? Wait, hey, no, no, hang on. <laughs> don't don't say it. I want to I want to tell a story. I want to tell a story. I'm a northern girl from the north, from the <laughs> Chicago area. And when I moved down here, I will never forget. <laughs> I was working at a restaurant. And a girl said, was training me, and she said, Julie, come see. And I went over fully expecting to look at something, right? <laughs> but she told me something in my ear. Uh -huh. And it had, I learned something. She wanted to tell me, um, you know, something about the serving process. But that was so strange to me that she said, come <laughs> see, because I didn't understand that saying at all. And when I'm reading this and I research and I learn that come see, see means learn. I thought, oh my oh, gosh, how funny. the Cajuns have it right. <laughs> and it's not necessarily a Southern thing. It's a very Cajun thing. Yeah. You know, it's a very Louisiana thing. Come see when you want to teach something. So we see that Andrew mm -hmm. was one of those two disciples. And it's not said who the other one was, but it's thought to have been John. Um, the beloved mm -hmm. because John's family and Andrew's family were partners in oh uh, yeah in the business in the business right so it's and they were the two younger Andrew and John were the younger so it would make sense that they were and probably hanging out. together yeah. hanging out together and and they are younger yes like not so not like 18 younger but right much much younger. much younger so we see Andrew and whoever the other disciple is probably John stay the night with Yeshua it's said that it was um, Shabbat, mm -hmm. and they spent the evening with him, and they brought in the Shabbat meal, and just learning, and learning, and learning, to the point 
uh, that they had that the Andrew the next day goes to Peter, his older brother, and says, we found the Messiah. So Simon, all excited, is ushered into his presence, and Yeshua says, I love it, Yeshua says, oh, I'll just read it. I don't want to, I don't want to paraphrase this. You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Kepha, which means a stone. I love that because it reminds me of um, the church of Pergamos, which is given oh, a the stone, stone and a, and new, a name. new name. And oh yeah, I didn't yes. talk about that. Yeah. Yes, that's what it reminded me of. And oh, and a new name. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. And you have in your Torah portion a the new a new name. You know, Jacob's given a new name, and here Peter's going to play a role. An important role he's going to be one of his closest disciples and he's given a new name and it's a hint as to a little stone a pebble right because almost like saying them... I'm the rock and you're the little which, stone which home. comes up with him right, in 16 right. so now we have Andrew John and Peter and then they come upon Philip. It doesn't say a whole lot about him except Yeshua said, follow me. And he said, okay, I'm in. Well, yeah. It says, Philip went and found um, Nathaniel and said to him, I have found him who Moshe, Moses, wrote of in the Torah and the prophets, Yeshua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Joseph. And I love Nathaniel's his response is, it is impossible. Is it possible for any good matter to come out of Nazareth? <laughs> Philip said to him, come and see. Come and learn. Come see. And, yeah, come see. <laughs> and remember who else is out of Nazareth? Cajun. Who? Jonah. Jonah. Which doesn't Yeshua say, the only sign I'm going to give you is, is the Jonah? sign of Jonah. Yes. But I love it because to me, this again points to them being a part of that northern right. kingdom and looking for someone from Jerusalem to rise up right. as the Messiah. Right. And then another thing pointing to my theory here <laughs> is that Yeshua's response is, see truly an Israelite in whom is no deceit. He calls him an Israelite. He doesn't call him a Jew. They're not called Israelites at that time. Right. They're called Jews. Yeah, right. So to call him an Israelite, to me, There's points to the point. fact mm -hmm. that he is from the northern kingdom and here you have the Messiah calling all of these northern kingdoms first. Right. Well, we'll look at the pattern now. We're all coming in from the northern kingdom, and the Jews in the land at the time now will be the last ones to get that revelation of who Messiah is. Same pattern. Okay, so Nathaniel's curious now. He says, wait, how do you know me? How do you know who I am? Mm -hmm. And he says, from where do you know me? Yeshua answered and said to him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. This has so much meaning. Mm -hmm. Because under the fig tree refers to Solomon's kingdom when, every, when things were so plentiful that everyone sat under their own vine and fig tree. It's yeah. a messianic yeah, it will happen um, again. implication of abundance. Mm -hmm. You know, you will have, meaning you will have... Um, want plenty of wine from the vine and plenty to eat from the figs it's just symbolic of abundance right you'll have everything you need in the messianic kingdom so here he is sitting under the fig tree probably studying torah and he's probably studying the torah portion we had last week where jacob sees the ladder yes because it says in 51 truly truly i say to you from now on you shall see the heavens opened the heaven opened and the messengers of Elohim ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Right. So he is, just like what you said last week, that word meaning man, not so much a ladder. And right. it. it means not it. Yeah, it means it, the meaning he. he. Yeah. Yeshua is now confirming that. Right. Now moving on to two, we see, and on the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Yeshua was there. And the third day, I wish... I had uh, time, I had time to, to go about the third day. We into had a third the third day. day. On my side today. I'm on the... Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, you did. But I want to go back to the Genesis third day mm -hmm. for this Which one. Which one? <laughs> Genesis 1. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of Yours is in Genesis 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so, and you have Abraham looked on the third day. You have all the... 
there's a lot of third days. Right, right. So basically, here's what I came up with. I'm going to say this really fast because it's it's a it's a long process of how, <laughs> how I, I got there. Yes, how <laughs> I got there. But on the set, let's go back to the second day. On the second day, the Lord divided the water mm -hmm. from the waters. So there's no blessing on that day. Correct. Because I believe the reason is, is because when he divides the waters from the waters, those waters are used for judgment. Mm -hmm. Those, they're always used for judgment. Because think about even today, the waters on the earth, they're used, if you don't get waters, you're in a famine. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's judgment. The thing that we can't live without, that our bodies are made of 70% of, is also the death of us. <laughs> if yeah. we don't have it or if we have too, much, too much of it yeah. or, you know, it's one of those weird things. So he also uses those waters for the flood as a form of judgment. And on the third day of creation, there's a double blessing. Mm -hmm. So I think that this wedding is kind of symbolically referring to that double blessing yeah. on the third day. Because on the third day, we're going to have the wedding supper of the Lamb. You know, um, and it I was a common day to have a wedding because of the double blessing. I right. Mean, yeah, that right. was a. The, no, we had the Saturday weddings all the time. Right. They had Tuesday weddings all the That's time. That's right. They yeah, had because the third of the, day weddings. that double blessing. Right. So, they ran out of wine. We all know this story, right? But boy, did I see some, woo, some uh, treasures in it this time around. So a Jewish wedding goes for seven days, and it was not uncommon for them to run out of wine by the seventh day. Right. Okay, so here is, here's what, I saw something about Yeshua's mother Mary that I'd never seen before. So here is Mary saying, um, we're out of wine. Knowing who he is, mm -hmm. and knowing that he is, that that's one of the Messianic promises, is to have an abundance of wine. Right. Is almost prompting him, okay, we're out of wine. Do your thing. Do your thing, yeah. Do your thing, you're out of wine. And he says, well, what is that to me? It's not my time yet, mm -hmm. you know? And he said, and then, of course, she says, okay, fine, you know, do whatever he says. Right. And he does provide it. It is so symbolic. It says that they filled up six jars that are 30 gallons a piece. This wasn't just small little jugs. Right, no, they're big old jars. 30 gallons in each pot. They're made of stone. And he fills up six with water, which is used for, which is used for judgment, six of them representing the 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. And then those six are turned into wine when it's taken to the, uh, uh, wedding master, the mm -hmm. man who's going to test it. Right. So he says, Oh wow. It's amazing. You guys thinking these guys who are providing the wedding, not understanding Yeshua did it. Yeah. Says you guys, serve the best wine at the end, the end yeah. Which but usually, who is it that goes. knows who did it? The servants. Oh, the no, servants. the servants. The servants. His servants yeah. understood. So these 6,000 years of his servants understanding yeah. that messianic and the implication of the vessel. wine. Yes. Represents the body. Yes, yes, and I love it because only his servants knew that it was Yeshua that did it. I love it. And I just think that it's peculiar that it says, but when the master of the feast had tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, talking about the servants I love again, that. the master of the feast called the bridegroom. I don't know exactly what all that means. Oh, that's got something there. Oh, it does. Call and I'm going to I'm going to mull over it uh, more this week, know. but the cert I just think that's so important yeah, yeah, that, that the is. ones who are in service with Yeshua preparing the water, the judgment waters, those six huge jugs doing the laborious work, walking it out in obedience mm -hmm. to Yeshua at the time. They're the ones who saw what he did. But they the know. ones not at surprised. the wedding didn't yeah. necessarily See it? I, I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Not quite sure how that all ties the in. The onion yet, just keep pulling back. You right. cry a lot. That's oh, right. that's so great. Maybe by Pull next back. week I'll go. Okay, first I want to talk about this because I know what it yeah. means now. 
But anyway, that's all I have for you today. Good stuff. It was, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Saw a lot of good treasures this mm -hmm. week. Okay, thank you for joining us. And we will see you next week with episode 22. 22, yes. Shalom. Shalom.